Hey, hey, everybody! Welcome to Cinematic TNA. It's a very special edition. It's a big one. It's a it's a remastered edition. Oh shit! Uh, yeah, so it won't be good in thirty years. <laughs> yeah, it'll. We're just gonna add some really shitty extra extra vocals into it. Maybe throw some songs into it or some shit. <laughs> Some, uh, really bad, obviously not in-play CGI. Oh, my God. Oh, God, there's gonna be so much to talk about. It's really, like... Star Wars, baby, we're talking about Star Wars. Yeah, because, like, even, like, oh, my God, these, the... We'll, we'll get to the prequels in a bit, but they're bad in such an interesting way that we're gonna talk more about them, probably, than the original trilogy. Yeah, I mean, they got a lot more problems. Well, it's not even that they got more problems. It's that it's such an, like a massively interesting failure. Cause yeah, but we'll 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 get to that in a bit. Let we'll uh, in in a kind of hippieish way, we'll start at the beginning by going to the end. And, Absolutely. Uh, the original trilogy, which is because George Lucas, you know, is an ass, is the <laughs> the, the end of his saga. Uh, what is now referred to as a new hope. Right? Episode 4, Star Wars. Episode Origi 4, New Hope. Or as they called it in 1977, Star Wars. <laughs> the beginning, the really the beginning of the blockbuster uh, just thing that Hollywood would become enamored with. Yeah. Between that and uh, Jaws, this was the uh, 70s taking that turn into blockbuster cinema. Oh my god, taking it, taking a hard right. Right into it, just but, fucking crashing in, baby. And it really sort of builds on what Jaws did, because where Jaws was, yeah, it was like the first blockbuster. It was still a character study, like it, it was still very much of the '70s. Star Wars took that and made it very broad. It took all of the, what people thought Jaws was and actually made that. Well, you can't talk about Star Wars and its success without talking about merchandise. Well, which is funny because merchandise. <laughs> Didn't really play a factor until Empire. Well, they still had toys after the first movie no. came out, right? Well, they didn't? Well, no. Th here's the thing. They didn't really expect it to be that big. So there weren't Star Wars toys for six months after the movie came out. Ah, I see. All there right. are people, like, you listen to Kevin Smith talk about it. And my friend's father even told me this was true. That you wanted to buy Star Wars toys. There was a box, like, uh, shaped in Vader's helmet, I believe. Yeah. That didn't have toys in it, but it had the slots to store your toys in it. Six slots. Uh huh. But it came with a certificate that said, uh, we don't have toys right now, but buying this guarantees in six months' time, we will ship you the toys. Oh, shit. Yeah, so <laughs> they, they, they really had no idea what this was going to be. And yeah. Yeah, just... Star Wars was the first, but even then, it, it was a while before they got onto that train. Oh yeah, well yeah. It was a, it was a few months afterwards, but I mean it makes sense that you know. I mean the first the first movie when it came out, it was just it just struck a nerve. It was and unique. It was gritty. It was there was so much going on that you could watch it again and again and get well, something even, different out of it. It's funny because even you know with even without the impact of it being a blockbuster, the first, like the blockbuster to start the blockbuster trend. It was like a groundbreaking just in science fiction cinema to begin with because this was really like the first movie set in space that made it look dirty and lived in. Yeah, and made it look good. But <laughs> like not even like legitimate. But like that's the, like not even look good. Like it yeah, the effects are good and for the most part they well, still hold up. But like it looked dirty. Like it looked like yeah. people lived in it, not yeah, some yeah. super clean utopia. Oh, uh, well, we'll get into that later. Which, yeah, again, which is <laughs> why the prequels are so interesting that he fucked that up, too. Right. Oh, but, um, so much. But, yeah, the, the first movie, like it's the, f but the first classic. It's, it's a classic, but it's funny looking at it within the larger scheme of six movies, going on seven, and the myriad of comics and TV shows and video games and everything. It really is just a very simple adventure movie. Yeah, that's that's the thing. Like, it's amazing that this movie kickstarted 
something that's so such a simple adventure movie that you know you just want to you just you know popcorn flick it really and simple and, is the key word because yeah re-watching it it's amazing how everything in the movie it can just happens very conveniently oh yeah well listen but I'm not, that's, not, that's not like an that's not like a critique and no like, no oh, no it's I terrible know. but it's just like how that movie is so like easy basically oh and yeah how... no it's very convenient very easy it, it breezes along it's you know if you delve into it if you like watch it you know without being unforgiven there's a lot of holes and shit and just stuff that doesn't really make a whole lot of sense but you know nobody wants to watch a movie like that well not a blockbuster movie at the very <laughs> yeah. least and as, even as just a regular movie, it works. Like, the, the character motivations work. Or, you know, the story, for as simple and convenient as it is, works. It makes sense. You get into it. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, like, it's this, iconic, you know? I mean... Well, yeah, I mean, listen, there's not much that we can say about it that has already been said. Except maybe that, you know, uh, Uncle Owen, this R2 unit has a bad motivator. Yeah, I, I like rewatching him. <laughs> Mark Hamill's not good. <laughs> He's not good at all. Especially when you st- when you put him next to Alec Guinness, Harrison Ford, and Carrie Fisher. Even he stands in stark contrast to them. He's very, very much a guy who really probably only got the job because he like looked good. He's what? He's whiny as hell, and it it just amazes me. He's very whiny, but it's also. Again, to hint at what the prequels would hold, not as fucking whiny as Anakin. Well, yeah, I mean, that's the improvement. Or, and if you watch them in release order, the decline. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, well, that's what I mean. Like, maybe, maybe Lucas was going for that, like, hey, you know, Luke was really whiny and stuff and, like, kind of childish. Let's make his father exactly the same, except a thousand worse. times worse. It's yeah. I mean, listen, I'm not gonna give the guy that much credit just because of how much he f- just fumbled his own series like three times in a row. I can't. I won't give him that much credit because even. All right, we're, we're jumping ahead of ourselves. We'll get to the prequels <laughs> in a bit because <laughs> we want to just talk about them so bad. Because they're yeah. so bad. But here's my question. Okay. Maybe you can answer this for me. The original movie. Yeah. Now we know the original script was totally fucking different. They even released a fucking comic book. Now you had Ralph McQuarrie, who yeah, yeah. I think I think Ralph McQuarrie is really doesn't get nearly enough credit as he should for just you know he made everything look so fucking cool. Well, here's those the drawings. thing. The thing, like the thing with Star Wars is. Lucas gets too much credit and almost kind of, you know, not enough blame. I agree, 100%. Because which is funny because it everybody hates him for the prequels, yeah. but you don't really I don't think people really understand how much he's to blame for the prequels. Mm-hmm. Because he doesn't he gets too much credit for the original trilogy because that was like three movies of collaboration. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, like he, he was he, bouncing he, ideas off of people, and they were telling him, "Nah, try this," or you know, like. But he had, you know, he had McCore, he had Lawrence Kasdan, he had the actors too. So I mean, he was smart enough to know they had a say in things t- to a degree. Well, absolutely. Had, you know, he had people to not answer to so much because it was his thing, but he he was more willing to collaborate. Right. Where I don't think people really get that. Where I, they also don't seem to get that. He was the only one making decisions in the prequels. Right. This was literally why, just him. And that's and that's the you know that kind of puts it into perspective for you that maybe George <laughs> Lucas isn't this fucking auteur that everyone that a lot of people seem to think he is. Well, he's very much just like looking at the prequels. He's an idea guy because the the very idea of making a, the prequel trilogy as watching Anakin's fall, in and of itself, is not a bad idea. Absolutely not. No, it's a cool idea. But it it's... The execution is, is uh... so lacking. <laughs> and and I'll say this. <laughs> I think Revenge of the Sith is the best directed of the prequels. Because 
Because oh, yeah. we, we got to f- remember, he hadn't directed a movie in 22 years before until, you know, the prequels. Yeah. He, di- he didn't direct anything between A New Hope and Phantom Menace. Yeah, he didn't have to. <laughs> he didn't he have was, to. He was writing, he was doing all sorts of Indiana Jones shit. Yeah, he didn't have to, but at the same time, jumping right back into Phantom Menace was, I think, really the biggest problem he had. Yeah. Aside from taking on all of the, the things himself... That was he was rusty as hell, and we can tell. Like he 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 really just lost focus of how to direct what made the the franchise good. Yeah, and really just how to work with actors. I mean, twenty two years of not doing that really like really comes through. Well, yeah, everyone in those prequels is just wooden. As no, hell. Not a, I won't say everyone. You well, and McGregor's you, you great. You and McGregor's solid. And, uh, Ian McDermott as Palpatine is act is really good. <laughs> Do it. Well, again, there are moments where <laughs> even even they can't save some of the dialogue they have to do. Do it. Because even Sam Jackson's has some terrible fucking dialogue that uh, no, a yeah, guy that... a guy who's a poet like Sam Jackson can't make this dialogue saying you know. Yeah, that, like, it's just like I don't know, man. Some of the shit, like the whole sand line. I hate sand. Course, <laughs> it's just like what the fuck are you talking about? Why are I'm, you talking about sand? Just, in my opinion, the jet. From my point of view, the Jedi <laughs> are evil. <laughs> That's it's, even worse. It's, it's just like, all right, what? Jesus, fuck! Come on. From my opinion, the Jedi's are bad. Like, what are you writing a fucking essay? Jesus Christ, dude! Oh my god. Well, we, I guess, all right, I guess we, maybe should we get back into Empire or should we just talk about the prequel? Well, now? I mean, let, you know, we'll, <laughs> we'll talk about the, um, let, let's get, like, New Hope. I mean, just a little more, like, uh, right. I don't know. It, New Hope it's is... funny, like, you could see some of Lucas's issues in it. Oh, you could see a lot of his issues. Just in general, like, there's some, like, you know, the guy doesn't really know how to, Tell someone how to do a line. <laughs> well, because, like, just knowing now what his directing style is, that he likes to find it in the edit. Yeah. Where he shoots a lot of coverage and just f- works of the movie at the end. Mm-hmm. I, he, he's very much not an actor's director. So you can see the only guys in all six of the movies, the ones that do good jobs, are, like, legitimately good actors. Like Harrison Ford. Harrison Ford can, like, make a movie work just on his own. Right. Uh, You know, Carrie Fisher's good because she's got, you know, she's got a very good screen presence. You look at Alec Guinness. You look at, um, I always forget his fucking name. Who plays Tarkin? Oh, fuck. I don't know his name. He's the hammer guy. It's not Vincent Price. It's not Christopher Lee. Yeah, I know. I know exactly. I always forget his fucking name. (laughs) God damn it. Ugh. Whatever. It's fine. But like, like he's great. I mean, and then you look in the prequels: you and McGregor, Christopher Lee, Sam Jackson. It's like, you know, the guys who are good actors are going to be good. But you look at Mark Hamill. You look yeah. at Hayden Christensen, Natalie Portman. For as you know, an award-winning actress as she is, she need she needs direction. <laughs> she does. When she's in a blockbuster, she is very much like not in her element because even in the thor movie she's bad yeah she's not good in those it's like blockbusters just do not connect to her yeah i don't know man i don't know what the deal is with peter that. cushing peter cushing that's his name there yeah i just imdb it peter cushing um yeah i mean and then you got some of the bad not bad because it's not prequel level bad but some of the stiff dialogue he saddles them with is yeah. it? Like, aren't you a little short to be a stormtrooper? I knew there was more to you than money. <laughs> it's like, what the fuck? <laughs> oh, man. It, but, you know, listen, it's a fucking classic. It's, no, it's, yeah, it's It started a giant. It's, you know, it's Star Wars, man. What else can you fucking say about Star Wars? It's bigger than all of us. I mean, it's really, <laughs> like... We can like point out flaws, but when you watch the thing as a whole, you get caught up in it and you just ignore some of it. Yeah. And it's just you know it's a great fucking movie. 
like it's it's one of the best. You know, you can't say anything against it. Absolutely not. Um. So, uh, for as standalone as a new hope is, the and as great as a new hope is, the fact that it spawned a sequel that was very much about building a franchise. Oh yeah. That managed to be better than it, the original. Empire Strikes Back is is in a league of its own, you know? It's, it's amazing. Like, the leap in quality just on all levels is astounding. And, you know, it's funny because that's the one that, like, he fucked around with the least. Like, oh, when he uh, yeah. went back and, like, you know, remastered shit and did these special editions, that's the one he fucked with the least. Like, he only added, like, maybe... You know, a couple of, like, digital scenes in, yeah, in like, Cloud out. City or some shit, you know? Yeah, smooth out some of the effects, whatnot, but no, like, changing the scenes of anything, like, fundamentally. And, and then he, well, he changed, uh, which is, I actually think is a good change. He made the Emperor not look like a fucking alien. Yeah, well, yeah, he added Ian McDermott into it. Yeah. Yeah. Which, Which is fine. That's fine. I, that's fine. I have no problem with that. That's because right. he's like, you know, like, yeah, he was great, and he's a good emperor, so that that's fine. Yeah. But uh, and it's also the one that Georgie Boy didn't direct or really write, and wasn't on set for the filming. He wasn't on set, huh? No, I think um, he was busy. From what I hear, that Lucas Lucas film was in very bad financial trouble, so mm-hmm. he was dealing with the uh, business. Ah, I see. And they were filming over in England, and he really didn't have anything to do with the filming of it. And he was very upset with um, Erwin Kirshner for his filming style because, you know, Erwin Kirshner didn't shoot like Lucas. He shot what the edit was. He he fr- he storyboarded it, shot his storyboards, and yeah. edited. And the movie was what he shot. There was no finding it in the edit. But it's the it's the and best, you can tell it's the best looking one because it's perfectly shot the framing is very great cinematic the lighting's br- beautiful it looks like a high-end movie yeah and you know the acting's much better i mean hamill still got some really bad moments in it but it's just an overall better directed movie and it shows man it I, that's that's part of the reason why it's rightfully considered the best star wars movie because it's 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 dark it's got enough funness in it you it's know? dark, but without being grim. Right, right. Like, it's you not never, like, yeah. you, you never like, oh, God, this is unbearable. Yeah, it's like, you're like. It's not, it's not really dark till the end, like. Right, and you're rooting for them. You're like, oh, shit, no, oh, Han Solo card, I know, fuck. Because it's funny, it feels like it's in, it's in response to the original where everything's very easy for the characters. Yeah, and then everything just becomes, like, impossibly hard. Where, like, everything falls apart. Like, oh, they got... Oh, the uh, Hoth base is getting attacked, and then they have to run and split up, and well, yeah. Luke has to train, and training's not going well, and Han and Leia are lost, and they have to go to Cloud City, blah, blah, and all this shit happens, and you're like, alright, but, you know, they're gonna get... They're gonna win in the end, right? And nope. <laughs> nope, they don't win. And the biggest... I mean, really, the biggest, like, example of that little thematic element running through it is Luke finding out that Vader's his father and just completely shifting his fucking mind. See, I wish I could have seen the movies not knowing that. I know, right? That would have been so... Because that's always... That's something that, like, you know... Even when I started watching him, I just knew that he was his dad. It was one of those things that entered pop culture and we couldn't really escape it. It was everywhere. Yeah, yeah, but, it's, you know, not, it's which just is, a thing. But I just wish I could have watched it. It's funny because... Not knowing what, that. Watching it with Lauren, I don't think she knew because she like kind of got started laughing when it happened. Like, oh my god! Like one of those laughs, like almost like a nervous laugh. Oh, that's sick. Like she kind of, I I don't think she knew, which I'm very jealous of that feeling. Seriously, me too, man. I always knew, but yeah, but still, that you know, that's just that in and of itself is just an amazing. You and know, that, and, they, and people have been ripping that off for fucking years, like the, the twist at the end, the twist at the end, and or like the, the oh the bad guys twist. related to you, yeah, just, which uh, you know again that wasn't done before, yeah, he, he really unique. he really changed the game in that sense again, and like he even knew it too the way they filmed it like the 
people on set didn't know that's what the line was. Wow, really? Yeah, they filmed them saying something else. I forget what the line was, but they basically added it later with James because James L. Jones is doing the line. Right, right. So, I mean, he knew. Like, he knew that this is the big thing of the movie. And for a twist that occurs in Return of the Jedi that doesn't really feel like it was built in from the beginning, I th- it like Vader being his father feels like that was from the beginning the plan. Yeah, like it could have been that. just from just from like the one line Ow- Uncle Owen says in A New Hope. That's uh, what I'm afraid of. Well, when Amperu's like he's just yeah. like his father. Uh, that's, that's what, what I'm, I'm afraid, afraid of. of. Yeah. No, you're right. It works even with that because it's you know it's subtle. Well, because he, you know, Lucas always said that the original trilogy was a, was a series about fathers and sons. Yeah. So I mean that that makes sense that he would build that into it and that that's the reveal you do. Right. Where the Leia thing in Return of the Jedi just feels like it all right, feels they forced. And especially with the whole and thing un- in Empire, kind of making a love triangle thing. Yeah, like they were they were building that up and then the third one it's just like oh no all right it just feels unnatural because because the like yoda ends the mo- like there's a line yoda's last line is but there is another and right. you're like oh another is there another skywalker and then return of the jedi is kind of like oh shit how do we how do we deal with that well, i think uh, it was even more vague because he just says no there is another yeah but i mean meaning that's... there is another possible person who could save who could potentially save the galaxy? That's what yeah. I took out of it. I don't know. No, yeah, that's that's exactly it. It felt like they didn't have an actual answer to that little riddle, and yeah. it it doesn't feel right. Whereas Empire built very naturally to its conclusion. I mean, like Empire is just great. Empire yeah. is amazing. Visuals great, actions great. The fucking top to bottom, it's great. Lando is a great addition to the world. Just another skeezy part of the Star Wars universe. This deal keeps getting worse every time. <laughs> the, the light speed doesn't work. They told me they fixed it. <laughs> it's not my fault. <laughs> yeah, just it's full of classic moments. And it's uh, just Yoda, too. I love, I love Frank Oz's Yoda. Oh, Yoda is just, like, that crazy old man in the woods. Yeah, I love that shit. Who's just, like, not telling him he's 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 the Yoda he's looking for. <laughs> <laughs> when he just starts beating R2-D2 with a stick, just like an old man. No, that's mine! Yeah, it's hysterical. And but it's so just... weird, it's so weird the shift, though. Like, he starts out as, like, this kooky old man. And, and then, then, like, and then he's just like, I cannot trick him. And then he just goes right into, like, pissed off old man Yoda training buddy. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> I'm just, like, seeing what Luke is like that, oh, he's a little too much like his dad. I don't... Yeah, he kind of sucks. <laughs> like, this, like we made this mistake before. Yeah, right? Exactly. But, yeah, Yoda's great. And it's, it's, like, it's funny that this puppet feels so alive and like just a real character that you kind of forget there's a guy with a hand up its ass yeah but that's the thing though like it it looks okay it's not like the uncanny valley bullshit in the prequels but what's fucked up again hint going into the prequels yet yet again (laughs) is that they they did a puppet in phantom menace but the puppet looks like absolute horseshit yeah the pup well you know what he even because I, uh, I watched the Blu-rays, the newest Blu-ray ones. Yeah. And he completely took the puppet out. He put in a CGI Yoda in place of that puppet in Phantom Menace. Well, that's, you know, a, a fucking smart decision. Because that puppet looked like absolute horseshit. But there is one part where it's like... You could tell that they needed... it's, it's so, It looks so fucking weird. There's a shot with, like, Mace Windu is in the background... Behind Yoda, it's like a close-up of Yoda, and Mace Windu is like out of focus, and then Yoda was like, you know, they, they, I guess they decided we're gonna make Yoda talk for like a little bit more. So then Mace Windu starts to move backwards as if he's going to look at Yoda to see what he's talking about, and then he just freezes in the background, like totally freezes. 
And then Yoda keeps talking for like another second or two. But then I like, I, I noticed it and I was like, wait, fuck, that, that looked like shit. And I rewinded it, rewound it. And it, it's so obvious. Like you can't unsee it. And it's just like, how the fuck does he get away with this kind of stuff? Like, how does he not, how does he not see like that it looks like complete garbage? Well, see, he does, I mean, he doesn't get away with it. Everybody's been pillorying him for fucking about like fucking 20 years now well, of doing even, this shit. I'm not even talking about fans. I'm talking about like people he works with or him himself. How can well, he look at it and be like, yeah, that's fine. Just release it. Because like, he's Jesus. a fucking clown. He doesn't like, <laughs> he, he honestly just believes like what he's doing. Like his decisions are right. Ugh. And like that goes to the problem with the prequels. He didn't, he, he just did what he thought was it. No, right. no, Nobody telling him anything. Nobody saying that's wrong. That doesn't look good, and it, well, it, it's wrong. I mean, his his bad ideas have been plaguing the uh, so bad. He started plaguing the original trilogy with this shit. I mean, oh fuck, we got to go back to fucking New Hope. The Greedo shooting first thing. Oh god, it looks so bad when he, the fucking when Han Solo moves his head to the to the right or the it's left. It's terrible. It's just absolute shit. The, the fucking Jabba, Jabba scene. scene. It's so fucking. This just garbage. It's and it just, adds nothing. It adds nothing. Nothing at all. On, it, honestly, nothing. It would be better if they just cut it out again. It's literally <laughs> it's pointless. Like, completely, it's... And it sucks that, like, you have to watch... That's, like, the only way to watch these movies now, unless you have a fucking VHS from the 80s. Like, that's the only way to watch them, is, is the way that he fucking comes in and he puts his dumb CGI bullshit crap and... Crap and Bantha in the background, shit. Ugh, it's so annoying. He, yeah, he, it's, it's. And Empire, he didn't do, really do much. Nah, he did it. Return, which is good. Return of the Jedi. He, did he do? I don't think he. Oh, uh, just that one thing with the, the singing alien. That bullshit. Yeah. Ugh. Well, I mean, and you know, fucking adding Hayden Christensen to the end of the the movie. Yeah, that that annoys me too cuz it's well, like Lauren, I didn't show Lauren the prequels when we watched Return of the Jedi and she's like, "Who is that?" <laughs> exactly. That doesn't make sense because he's aged. Exactly. It doesn't make any sense cuz he's aged. So it's like, "Who the fuck is that?" It's right, literally, it's who, who is, is this? this guy? It's like, "Who is this guy?" I don't know who this guy is. It's because... just some just some dick in a field. Right, it's like if you really wanted to make it go with, you know, it's like, oh, it's Hayden Christensen, you should have got fucking Ewan McGregor to be Obi-Wan, you should have got CGI Yoda to be the ghosts. But even then, it would just be like, who are these people? Right, and and it's stupid. We we haven't (laughs) seen these people. I know, it's fucking retarded. God damn it, George. Which, you know... Oh, and also him adding another no to Return of the Jedi. Oh, yeah, at the end with Darth. What what a fucking idiot he is! He's li- <laughs> like it's really be it's it's so incomprehensible that a guy so important to cinema could be that stupid. It it makes no sense to me. And, and like he literally just it just annoys it. the fuck out of me that he has this much money that like he doesn't. Ugh. Well, the fucking problem that wasn't he had this much money. The problem was he owned it. He or every Star Wars movie before. Yeah. Man, now, that's... before The Force Awakens was an independent movie. Yeah. He owned the characters. He 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 made them, and then Fox distributed them. He, it, nobody, literally nobody could tell him no. Yep. And he fell so far up his own ass, <laughs> believing the hype of like, oh I oh I I changed Hollywood and made blockbusters a thing. I I I, I could do no wrong. <laughs> he believed it. And, yeah. And after constant fucking bombardment from fans of you suck you ruined everything <laughs> he was literally just like oh well i'll give it to disney I, I can't do this anymore this i i'm an old man i'm, I'm frail this is bad <laughs> i'll i'll let, I'll I let love J- that impression I'll, shit. I'll let jj abrams oh, take care of it oh. i'll let jj abrams uh, take all all the pressure on and then you know i'll i'll, I'll just have money and 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 deal with charities and <laughs> It, it'll be fine now. You, have you seen that documentary, The People vs. George Lucas? I haven't, no. It's actually really good. Check it out. I, I and will. I know, and I mean, I know you already hate Lucas as much as I do, but it'll just, 
It'll just add fuel to the fire. It's, it's so fucking weird because, <laughs> like, I hate him, but also understand like how important he is. Like, I he, he's so important. You sh- should like what he what good he's done should outweigh the bad, but the bad is so bad. Well, yeah, that's the thing. Like, it's not a- even like Coppola. Like, Coppola is not fucking ruining the Godfather. <laughs> yeah. Like, he's not going back and adding fucking scenes to The Godfather or, like, doing digital fucking replacement scenes for The Godfather. For all well, the he, bad... did, he did one thing what, once, what but that? I actually liked it. Um, when During the 90s, they did this thing called... The, he just combined the first two movies. Oh, the chronological order? Yeah, it was like the Godfather epic, they called yeah, it. Yeah, it, it started Young Vito, Godfather 1, then Michael yeah. Stuff and Godfather 2. And then he added a scene, which I think would have been a, like really good if they had put in two um remember the guy that kills his wife in italy yes fabrizio yeah yeah yeah. they had a scene like a real quick scene where like he just sends a, a bunch of guys to go kill fabrizio somewhere yeah yeah that that's a deleted scene from one. Oh, it's from one yeah i yeah. thought it was in two. Oh, never whatever i don't know but yeah, yeah. Th- that's that's all right with me but yeah, well, that, no, well that's not Lucas. that's not even like fucking with the movie. That's just one of those things, you know, they do for TV sometimes. They'll yeah, have yeah. deleted scenes. But like he's like Lucas hasn't tainted the good he's done. I mean Coppola hasn't tainted the good he's done. Yeah. Lucas has. Oh, he's he's fucking rubbed his taint all over it. Cause even Spielberg, like, he managed to convince Spielberg to do that with E. T. by taking the guns out and putting walkie talkies in. But then yeah. Spielberg was like, nah, fuck that. When the Blu-rays came out, it's like, I took that shit out. I'm literally never doing that again. It's stupid. <laughs> He's like, I told George, like, no, this is bad. Like, whatever. I made the movie. Like, it's it should stay the way it is. Yeah. That's what people liked about it in the first place. There's no reason to go back and retroactively change shit but if it's people not even already like, fucking liked it. But it's not even, like, retroactively changing shit. Because, like we said, some of the... It, like smoothing out some of the effects work is fine. Like yeah, whatever, that, that's the, fun. The, the, but like that actively, great. actively changing like like scenes and motivations or the tone. Right. Like taking the guns out takes away some of the danger or, of like ET. Fucking going in and making Greedo shooting first takes away some of Han Solo's badassness, yeah. making him less of a criminal. Like. Yeah. If you want to go and, like, do some edits, that's fine. Like, I'm sure nobody would mind. If you if... made it look a little bit better, yeah, that's fine. That's fine, exactly. Or if there's, like, some audio flub or whatever. Like, people do that. Like, fucking Nolan did that with Bane. Fucking, I've heard three different versions of Bane's voice. Yeah. And that's fine, because you're cleaning up the audio. You're not changing the fucking movie. Right, right, right. But, yeah, Return of the Jedi. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, Return of the Jedi... You could well, you could start seeing him. Uh, well, this one he got involved in. Was a very this one he got heavily apparent. involved in again. Yeah, he I he from what I hear he basically directed the movie, and that the guy credited Christopher Markhand was mm-hmm. really just like just some guy who, who was there just to like I don't know probably just, set was, up shots and shit. He was just a puppet. <laughs> yeah, and he that could... and you can tell honestly you can tell because. Just from like the visual directing standpoint, for the most part, it's a very workmanlike visual st- style. Like it's not as good looking as Empire. Yeah. Like, like it, the camera work and the shot choices and some of the lighting looks very much like Lucas's. Oh well, I'll fix it in editing. Yeah. Where it's not as pristine or well placed shots. I mean, some of the there's some great shots like Luke fighting Vader at the end is great. Oh yeah, no, those are good. But it's still got very much that workman. Just... And there's reused shots too from the second one. Yeah, it's like the one shot of Vader looking out of the window. Yeah. That it's they fucking... started Empire with, and then they just decided to throw in there for whatever fucking reason. It's just like, bro, like, how how could you have how it just it just boggles my mind that this guy has this fucking billion dollar franchise and then when he he just comes in he edits he makes it it's like amateur fucking hour it makes no sense to me whatever (laughs) i don't know i mean look like return of the jedi gets a lot of shit i mean it still has a lot of love people still love it but it gets 
gets it's like the redheaded stepchild of the original trilogy. Yeah, absolutely. And like I get it. It's it feels too much like Lucas has finally trying to like force the movies to be a little too kitty and toy friendly. Well, yeah, yeah, I mean, you had an entire race of teddy bear creatures. Like they spend way too much time on Endor. Way too much time. Like there's a whole middle part of the movie that just like slows down. It slows oh, it just drops to a crawl. Slow down so much. It 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 drops to a crawl of just oh look at these little teddy bear things and especially when the end like the ending itself is great cutting to Vader and Luke and the the space fight with Lando and then Han and Leia and Chewie fighting the stormtroopers that's all great yeah but. There's so much fucking shit with the Ewoks. Like, come on, where, rocks. Where, like, rocks. The I, Empire I got defeated by rocks. I know, but like, <laughs> you, but you look at those three things, and that we could have had more time spent with Vader and Luke, and their relationship. Yeah, no, I would have loved to have seen more. But of that. because, but because we had to spend so much time setting up the fucking Ewoks, <laughs> some of the like real emotional heft of the movie is lost. Yeah, because he needed to fucking sell toys, uh, and we was... know, and we know it was because he wanted to sell toys because the original idea was to set it on the planet of the Wookies. It was supposed to be on Kashyyyk, yeah. And but it's like, well, we already got uh, Wookie toys. We need to make uh, new toys, and so the fucking Ewoks were born, and <laughs> the the sort of childish <laughs> sense of humor that pervades the Ewok stuff, yeah, is is very blatantly like this is for toys. Uh, God, it bothers me so much. Well, I mean, it's so obvious, too, because they had the fucking Christmas special afterwards. He made, like, all these Ewok movies, made-for-TV movies and shit. Well, no, the the Christmas special was after A New Hope. Oh, never mind. What was the... No, there was Ewok movies then. That's what I'm thinking of. There was an Ewok movie. Yeah, yeah because Boba Fett made his first appearance in the Christmas special. That's what... Oh, don't even get me fucking started on Boba Fett. Listen, I I a hundred percent agree with you. <laughs> Boba Fett is not a character. He's he's a fucking toy. He literally he's does literally nothing. a toy. He do, you know he do, uh, no he actually does do something. He shoots at the wall next to Luke in Empire Strikes Back. <laughs> he shoots at the okay, <laughs> riveting stuff. He, he says like, literally- like four lines. Like literally, the biggest moment uh, he like he has is accidentally getting killed by Han Solo. Boba Fett. Boba Fett, where? Psh, psh, dead. Uh, now listen, this here. I'm gonna mouth off about Star Wars and merchandise for a hot second. Do it. Now, the thing is, the Star Wars movies, the, the original trilogy, they're they're solid. But my main problem is fans trying to, like, make make things seem cooler than they are. For example, Boba Fett. Yep. Oh, yeah, Boba Fett's awesome. Boba Fett's so cool. It's like, yeah, but, like, in context of the movies, he does dick. Now, when you were a four-year-old kid, six-year-old kid, whatever, you had your Boba Fett toy and you were flying around and shit, yeah, that's fine. That's great. Do whatever you want. Toys, he looks cool. And... Your imagination is probably better than anything George Lucas could fucking take ch- shit out of his mind if he's working. And that's the thing. Like, people tend to, like, especially with Star Wars, they tend to, like, not separate their happy childhood nostalgia with merchandise to the actual quality of the source material. You know what I mean? No, no, I that's I 100% agree. That's that's true. And it's kind of like listen, don't try don't try and sit here and like defend Boba Fett as a cool character when he literally does jack shit and he was just made to be a fucking toy. <laughs> yeah, no, it I mean it's it's 100% true. It's the nostalgia creeps in with with fans at some point. Yeah. A, a lot of it for, you know, for the most part. Yeah. Uh and listen, man. Too like uh, I have. I'll 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 drop this because like you know I was a, I was a '90s kid. I was a huge Batman fan. Batman was everywhere in the '90s. So like my first toys that I can remember, my first action figures were Batman Returns action figures. 
Now, when I was a kid, I have very fond memories of just like the whole merchandising behind it, like, you know, seeing the penguin drawn a certain way, whatever, having the toys, playing with the Batcave, all this shit. When I watch Batman Returns now, it's <laughs> nothing, none of my fond childhood memories have to do with the actual movie. It's all with the merchandise. Yep. No, I, I, I 100% yeah. agree. So it's... It's just, you know, different strokes, I guess. But I just hate that these fans sit here and try to defend, like, certain characters and insist that they're awesome and that they deserve to be considered high in the pop culture nexus well, simply I mean, because they fucking look cool and they have fond childhood memories. Well, that's that's one of the bad things that spawned out of uh, Star Wars is it it invented the, the man-child who can't escape his childhood. Oh, God. <laughs> like at all it's and did you, did you see that snl sketch i mean i heard about it but i it mean it pretty, sounds pretty spot on it was very spot on it was just you know like a a kid's commercial like one of those old kids commercials like kids playing like oh kylo ren and finn are fighting in lights and it's like but well, why would you? and then a guy comes in it's like an older man like but why would you open it and you could just leave it in the box and put it on a shelf <laughs> And it's like, yeah, man-child shit. Go ahead. I sorry, I interrupted no, that's, you. That's just the thing. They, they we, we, it, and it hasn't stopped. It, it seems to get worse and worse every year. Where people just assume because some they like something as a child that it's auto, like, it, oh, it's good. It has to be good. I feel good remembering it. It's like, it, but it's not. <laughs> you gotta escape some of that bullshit that you had when you were a child. I mean, I, I saw. The prequel trilogy when I was a child. Or at least Phantom Menace. I saw Phantom Menace and liked it when I was nine. Same. I look at it now and I can escape it. It's funny enough, even even as a 12-year-old, I hated Attack of the Clones, but... Uh, yeah, you know, that's weird, too, because I saw that with my dad. And we were both, like... I didn't know how to feel about it. I was still at, like, at such a stage in my life that I didn't know that it's okay to not like something. <laughs> Especially yeah. something as huge as Star Wars. For a lot of people, it was a movie. I, I, I made this comparison fucking yesterday that Phantom Menace and Attack of the Clones is basically the cinematic equivalent of JFK and RFK getting assassinated. The world... <laughs> cin cinema changed. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, it really showed a lot of people like, oh, things can go very wrong. Yeah. The like oh we, we this is how we learn that movies can be very bad and that sequels can be bad and that oh like things can fall apart massively oh, God. it taught a lot of be like lessons to people <laughs> yeah man and it, and even back then like i didn't know what to think of it and my dad was like i saw it with my dad and he was like that was absolutely awful i was like was it though it wasn't that I, and i said the first thing i said was like i like yoda jumping around he's like yeah, but it doesn't make any sense. Like, he's walking on a cane, and then he's just bouncing off of walls and shit. Makes no sense. I didn't like it. All right, Dad. <laughs> but he's spot on. He was fucking spot on back then. No, I mean, he's right. <laughs> it just goes to one of those things that he, like, Lucas lost the details. I mean, like, just shit you would, like, oh, that's cool. But then when you think about it, it's like, but wait, he's li this, this doesn't make sense. What, what, what's happening here? <laughs> I mean, and it even goes to, like, the prequels fucked up details from the original trilogy. Which is even worse. I mean, fucking oh, Anik, Obi Wan tells Luke, oh, uh, uh, Anakin, your father, I, I took it upon myself to train him. No, you didn't. <laughs> if the prequels tell us anything, no, you didn't. Qui Gon did. And then when Qui Gon died, you just felt guilty and trained the little prick. <laughs> And then he says, oh, well, Yoda trained me. No, he didn't. Qui-Gon again trained you, jerk off. Yeah. Like, it it doesn't line up. And also, the whole thing with, like, uh, Obi-Wan and A New Hope not remembering R2-D2. Yeah. That's... that's, that's like, I don't recall owning any droids. It's like, motherfucker, this, this little asshole was on you, with, on the, all these adventures with you. For like fucking 10 plus years or whatever, the Clone Wars and shit. How do you not fucking remember this guy? Well, not just that. <laughs> they don't They don't erase R2-D2's memory at the end of Revenge of the Sith. He would know. Right. He, he knows know. everything. 
He knows literally everything. He could have literally told Luke, oh yeah, Vader's your father. <laughs> In- instantly. Um, immediately. <laughs> oh, oh, by the way, beep, 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 by the way, you have a sister. Yeah. I saw them get birthed. So does and C-3PO, also, like, but they erased his fucking brain. <laughs> yeah, 3PO doesn't remember, that's fine, but R2-D2, from what Revenge of the Sith tells us, knows everything. <laughs> <laughs> and also, in Return of the Jedi, you have Leia go, I I kind of remember my mother. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. She, she was like, sad. Like, no, you no, don't. You don't fucking remember. You were just born. She died literally after you came out. Ugh. You didn't even look at her. Just fucking unforgivable. It's like he forgot his own movies. <laughs> yeah. Doesn't make any sense. It, it honestly feels like somebody who like, was told what Star Wars was by a moron, tried to make a Star Wars movie. Yeah. You would honestly be... If I told you, like, no, oh, if I showed the prequel trilogy to someone who didn't know George Lucas made them and said, did you... Who do you think made this? <laughs> they would not say George Lucas. <laughs> and I'd be like, no, George Lucas did make this. How? He forgot everything that made the, the original trilogy work. Everything. Everything looks clean and fake. It's overly CGI. Well, no. That, well, that's the one main issue I have is that, like, all right, say what you will. Like, you could forgive some plot stuff. But it's, the movies aren't even good to look at. Because well, the we're, we're, CGI combination between, like, humans and not humans, it just looks so fake and out of place and just not good. But, like, well... He, it's like he accidentally did what Watchmen did, but not on purpose. Like Watchmen, it was a stylistic choice to have like such fake backgrounds and shit. Like, oh, it kind of looks like a comic. There's something off about this. Yeah. Where George honestly thought this looked good. Right. And like, oh, this all blends. And it's like, no, it doesn't at all. No. Jar-Jar, this all looks really fake. Jar Jar looks completely fake next to Qui Gon. Well, you in, just like, gotta look at numerous scenes. I mean, Phantom Menace at least was shot on sets and, like, locations. Well, yeah, that, that that I'll give you. Like, Phantom, uh, Attack of the Clones and Revenge of the Sith is all green screen. And it, it Nothing and it feels shows. real. It, it, yeah, it doesn't feel real, and it doesn't look real. Everything just feels phony. Like, there was one shot. I was watching these with James, my roommate. The prequels. And, uh, there's one shot, like, in Revenge of the Sith when, I think, Yoda... And uh, Yoda, Obi Wan, and Leia's adoptive dad, yeah. whoever his name—I don't remember his name. Organa. Bail Organa. That's it, Bail Organa. They're in the ship that's in the New Hope, like in the hallway of it. Yeah. And it instantly looks so much better than the previous two and a half hours of the movie, because it's an actual set, it's an actual hallway, and it's not some fucking CGI like green screen bullshit. That he's just plastered on there. Well, like, I mean, I heard this one story about the making of the prequels in that when they had to make Vader's helmet for Revenge of the Sith, they um they found, like, the, um I, I guess the blueprints or the the schematics or whatever the fuck yeah. for, the, for the helmet. And the production designer of Revenge of the Sith wasn't on the original trilogy. And he noticed that Vader's helmet wasn't symmetrical. So, because this is what the pre- the prequels honestly thought they were doing, he thought he'd improve it and make it symmetrical. And even subliminally, something looks off about the helmet. Hmm, that's interesting. You know what I mean? Like, I never noticed that. But like, by he they, you literally have the helmet in your warehouse. There's no need to fix it. <laughs> but. That's what George and his team thought they were doing. Oh, we're going to make this better. But you didn't. There was no need to make it better. Vader's iconic. Yeah. That look is iconic. You don't have to change this. Uh, and then just... Uh, it's just well, hold on. Well, I guess we'll go one by one here. We'll start off with Phantom Menace. When it, when Probably as excited, if not more excited... Than they are now, like for Force Awakens. Oh no! There is, we cannot properly sell people on how 
massive the anticipation for Phantom Menace was. Oh, it was ridiculous. It was almost like a business in and of itself. <laughs> yeah. Like, because uh, people could not, in their minds, like, think of a situation where George Lucas coming back to make another Star Wars movie would fail. Yeah. So there was no even like, oh, well, what if it's bad? That doesn't flow. That didn't pop into anyone's mind. It that didn't cross that... anyone's minds that it would be bad. They were just that... like, no, it, it, he nailed it the first three times. Why wouldn't it, this one be great? It was like, yeah, that wasn't even an option for people. This wasn't a multiple choice test. This was just a statement. George Lucas doing Star Wars, it's going to be great. Oh my God, it's been 16 years. This is going to be awesome. And then... It's literally like JFK getting shot. Then when when people saw it, no, it's like the world changed. I'm sorry, it's an amazing comparison, though. But like, am I wrong? Like, no, you're not wrong. You're not wrong. Cinema changed when the Phantom Menace came out. Yeah. Because it literally taught everybody, oh, this anything can go wrong. And like we, like this, if. If you go into something with just, like, bad intentions or whatever, or you don't have the right idea, you're not doing this for the right reasons, yeah. this can be bad. And it re- and it almost instantly tainted the Star Wars brand. Yeah. Like, did. instantly. I mean, and it's just... Not to mention that literally nothing happens. The only, the only significant thing to the rest of the story is that Palpatine gets elected Chancellor. Well, two that, things happen. Palpatine gets elected, and Anakin becomes a Jedi. All right. But that's like yeah. all shit we knew. <laughs> yeah, that's all shit you knew already that did not... You didn't need this two and a half hour, whatever the fuck it was. Listen, here... The, the biggest problem <laughs> with the prequel trilogies, and is which is a massive misunderstanding of the, of the Star Wars franchise, it overcomplicated everything. Absolutely. The original trilogy. Yeah, some things got, you know, oh, you know, the the jet the rebels are fighting the empire and blah blah blah. Like there's some politics going on, but the three movies are to their core adventure stories. Yeah. What is Phantom Menace? It's a fucking movie that's about tax disagreements. <laughs> I'm 25 years old. I've probably seen Phantom Menace four times. Three of those times really trying to convince myself, it can't be that bad, can it? Trick trick question, it is that bad. (laughs) I have no idea what happens in the Phantom Menace. It's just... It's just nonsense. It's literally political nonsense. And I was trying to figure out, like, Palpatine's plot. And I was like, okay, so you have... You have the he the Trade Federation the two oh my god also the fucking racism in this movie just like just, it's insane just the two Trade Federation guys just Asian stereotypes Jar Jar is a fucking Jamaican guy Watto. anyway and Watto is just a Jew it's just ridiculous I mean like oh and, my god and the the thing about the original trilogy is it had people you could relate to like luke wasn't a jedi yet han solo was just some scumbag who didn't believe in all of this mystical crap yeah leia was the only one who was out of the ordinary as a princess but even then she's kicking ass she's not taking shit where the prequel the prequels are all about superbly trained jedi dealing with political bullshit that we cannot get our heads around cannot relate to and that can't even follow the plot either like the emperor's plan is so overly convoluted and so and one of those movie things of everything literally falls into perfect place for what he wants. But it does yeah, but it doesn't make any fucking sense. That's the thing. He, he <laughs> like this plan relies on so many different fucking pieces falling into place with so many different people acting in such a precise way for it to fall into perfect plan. That um, the, that Palpatine has it it strains credibility to such a degree you cannot care about the movie at all. Yeah, because it like all right. So he talks to the Trade Federation guys. They work for him. Yeah, Darth Maul works for him. Also, criminally, what? That's so criminal. 
that Darth Maul literally does nothing. They was oh, just was, delegated to a Boba Fett position. There was a lot of stuff with Darth Maul. And because, like I've said a few times already, George likes to find the movie in editing. He deleted everything with Darth Maul besides some basic plot points. Like, he comes into the desert and fights Qui-Gon for five seconds. And, and then he shows up at the end. Literally the only great moment in the in the Phantom Menace. Like, like a legitimate, like, okay, this is... Somehow, some old Star Wars crept into this movie. Well, John Williams fucking elevated that. Oh, absolutely, but that's that just goes to the filmmaking of it. Is that the the score couldn't save it? Like the score couldn't save Attack of the Clones. No, absolutely not. But that scene in and of itself was just okay. This works. Yeah. There's some good shit going on here, and John Williams's score complemented that and elevated it. Right. Where Attack of the Clones, nothing good happens in the movie. I literally cannot think of anything in Attack of the Clones, aside from Ewan McGregor's performance as Obi-Wan, that I like. There are no scenes. The the plot is even more fucking nonsensical in Attack of the Clones, because I can't even boil it down to, oh, tax disagreements. It's literally just, well, oh, we're, we're fighting, we're, oh, there's clones now. Well, here's the thing I have a problem with. Because, like, you, you, the, whole, I, the whole plot, like, is dependent on... Obi Wan or whoever, it was some who the fuck was it? Some guy told the the Genosians to make the clone army, right? Yeah. Like some older Jedi who got killed, maybe Darth, by Palpatine. Was Darth by, Sidious, I think. No, Darth Sidious is Palpatine. So, some yeah, some guy. I don't know. It's all convoluted bullshit. But it's like it. Okay, so like then you then you're kind of getting into the territory that like the Emperor knew that someone was going to come and get this clone army eventually and that it was going to come going to become the army of you know the whole fucking uh what you would call it the of the, the jedis and the republic or whatever well his whole plot it from what i can gather is that again it's one of those things where everything had to fall into such precise place that a Jedi would find the clones to get them to fight for the Jedi and the Empire, or the Republic, where they're in the position to turn on the Republic when em- the pa- when Palpatine says so. But then it doesn't make sense that like he has uh, Dooku. Dooku is working for him, doing all this stuff. It's, uh, it's and then it's, the, it, his, his both armies, one army that he's in control of, and the other armies in control of, are both fighting each other. Why? Why are you having these armies fight each other? In case the Trade Federation decides to betray you? It doesn't make any fucking sense. <laughs> and it, it's literally tr- like getting too complicated for its own good. He honestly thought he was doing something big and grand and like, oh, big conspiracy. And he just fucking lost the thread. And then another thing that confused the hell out of me was when Dooku goes to Obi-Wan... And is like, you know, he tells him basically that what's going on, that, you know, Palpatine is, or somebody is in the Republic is evil and Sith, and then like, we're trying to stop it. But he was lying? Do you remember uh, that scene? Uh, I don't know, man. I mean, that's just... <laughs> you see, like, it's not Like, even... you can't even, like, it, it, it the, the prequel trilogy is just... The stories so fundamentally don't work. I know, and it's just like I'm and trying like, to make sense of it. But I mean, there's what, no. What, I guess there's no way for me to make sense of it because there it's, isn't. It's, I mean, he just complete. And this goes again to him doing everything on his own. He like he had no no writing team, nobody doing helping him out, trying to make sense of this convoluted bullshit he's trying to do, <laughs> and it doesn't work. Like it's it's fucking, it's unbelievable. It and. The thing that's fucking blowing my mind with the the lead up to Force Awakens coming out is seeing people reevaluating the prequel trilogy, prequel trilogy, and going, "Oh, they're not as bad as you think." And it's like, "What the fuck are you smoking?" No, no, they are as bad. They're they really they not honestly bad. they aren't good. Like I I won't like they're there awful. Are some, <laughs> they're absolutely awful. Like there are some fucking moments. Like all right, Ewan McGregor is great. Some of the fights in like in Phantom Menace and Revenge of the Sith are good, but they are just overall garbage and they're not fun movies to watch either oh they're fucking boring they're boring they're a chore they're fucking long too 
they're really long. It's just like, ugh. anyone and who tries to sit here and defend them, no, you're incorrect. I'm sorry. You could tweet what? angry bullshit at me if if, if you want. And but it's like you're incorrect. You're wrong. They're and like, fucking pieces of shit. <laughs> It's like it's just so many fundamental misunderstandings of the world he built. Like, and like again, you could make the argument: Oh, Anakin's a whiny bitch, and that and that's why Looney's a uh, Luke is a whiny little girl. But Hayden Christensen is really the perfect poster child for this prequel trilogy of just fundamentally wrong on every level. Right. He's not a good actor. He's not I'm not a good gonna actor. say. He, listen, I won't, I'll say this. He's not lazy. He's trying. He's not up to the task, though. He's very wooden. He cannot handle dialogue almost at all. He sounds like an immigrant. It various, yeah, there's various... I mean, he fucking comes in and out of, like, an English accent sometimes. He's wood, but, like, he, <laughs> he cannot do emotions. Yeah. It's just completely... Completely ridiculous. And, like, the fact that... And the like, fact that you're try like that George Lucas honestly tried to convince us that this guy is Darth Vader or becomes he's not Darth at all. Vader. There's nothing that the two share. Well, there's no it not even that at at any point in the prequel the two that Hayden's in. Anakin's not threatening at all. He's not. He's a whiny fucking punk who <laughs> does nothing to prove why he's someone to be feared. Nothing. No, like literally nothing. The worst thing he does is kill a bunch of children. And as we know, living in America, you don't need to be a tough guy to shoot a bunch of children. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's not like he does nothing of any import. He gets fucking mutilated by Obi Wan. Yeah. I, I mean, it's he's it, and and Hayden Christensen cannot sell his journey at all to the dark side. No, he doesn't sell it at all. It's just like, it instantly happens. Like, what have I done? They're After trying it. to kill me, Anakin. Do Unlimited it. power! <laughs> Do it. Do it. Oh, fucking Christ. <laughs> <laughs> and like, Jesus seriously, the Christ. thing... Like, it's, again, I get the idea. Do an Anakin story as this as the downfall of Anakin Skywalker. I get it. That's an, actually a good idea. But none of the prequel trilogies have the sense of tragedy. No. Nope. You would honestly not know that anything bad is going to happen. No, there's no sense of dread. It just all happens in the third act of the third movie. Like it, it, It's like, what was it? Execute order, whatever? Execute order. One, two, three, seven. Why didn't he do that, like fucking years ago <laughs> like why did he wait until now because, but also, like, because now his face is all pruny it's just like if you had this fucking in plan for so long and it, ahead, only, it only happens because Palpatine like turns Anakin into a spy but Anakin's spying for the Jedi and Anakin tells the Jedi that Palpatine's bad and then when the Jedi go to get Palpatine Anakin stops them and then after that, Palpatine's like, all right, well, I got to get rid of all the Jedi now. Yeah, it's like... What the fuck is happening? It's like five different levels of bullshit just to get to this point. Oh, man. And my, the worst thing that... The thing that bugs me the most is just the reasoning behind why he joins the dark side. Because he doesn't want Padme to die. Because he doesn't want Padme to die. It's like, bro. And you know what's another thing? That's that the they... best thing you could fucking come up with. But no, here's the thing. If they added this element to it at all, if they had anyone tell him, oh yeah, if you're a Jedi and you die, if you train as a Jedi, there is training where your soul will live forever. Yeah. None of what you're doing matters. Your turn to the dark side honestly fucked you. Yeah, if Obi-Wan said, well, Obi-Wan didn't know that. But, like, if they had any... Even at the end, just like, oh, what Anakin did. What, like, just some sort of ironic, like, what Anakin did just fucked everything. Mm -hmm. they, don't, they don't do that element at all. Yeah. And it's not even mentioned a anywhere. It's something I had to realize of just, wait a minute, what the fuck? If Anakin just trained as a goddamn Jedi, 
Like, none of this would, like, there would be no death. <laughs> you could have just trained Padme or some shit or whatever. Like, dude, like, what are you doing? It's just, yeah. It's, ah, uh, this is so many, so many things. And then, like, I remember watching the movie, too, for the first time, Revenge of the Sith, in theaters. And then seeing Darth Vader, and I was like, all right, cool. it's cool to see Darth Vader. No. And then that happened. And then I was just like, you got to be fucking kidding me. It's, it's, it's <laughs> such massive, massive misunderstanding and just fumbling his own material. And like, yeah. like the, these prequel trilogies, there's no fucking, like, things happen. <sighs> and um, then, like, they resolve. Yeah. There's no, like, oh, well, uh, like, New Hope. We got to get Obi-Wan to the princess. Okay. And then they get that happens. And, like, whatever. You know, things happen. Em- uh, ret- uh, em- um, Empire Strikes Back. They're, ru- they're on the run from the, the Empire. And they're, they're failures, basically. Yeah. Return of the Jedi. We have to stop the Emperor. The Emperor is building the Death Star again. We're going to destroy it. Yep. Simple. There you go. I have n- the, the prequel trilogies amble along doing absolute nonsense until yeah. they have the need, feel the need to wrap themselves up in the third act with big action scenes. Yep. Like Re- Revenge of the Sith, just shit's happening and then the movie ends with, oh, well, the Jedi are all dead now. Go well, fucking come well, on. That was another thing too. Like when Yoda's fighting Palpatine... It just why, ends. Why does he just fucking walk away? I don't know. There's no explanation. It's like, why wouldn't he just keep fighting him? All he did was fall to the bottom. <laughs> like, and they keep telling us, like, Yoda's the most powerful Jedi there is. Apparently not. <laughs> but but then you gotta realize, Obi-Wan's probably the most powerful Jedi there is if he can defeat Anakin, who's apparently the most powerful Sith there is. It's just... Oh God. It's like the details... <laughs> It it all culminates in bullshit. Yeah, it does. like it it is so fucking just broken. It's just a steaming ho- pile of horseshit. And really, it's honestly, it's it's kind of comforting to know there's no possible way the Force Awakens can be as bad as the prequels. Oh, definitely not. At the very least, because J.J. Abrams, um. He's by no means a he's a he's a very very good filmmaker. Listen, he's not Spielberg, but he's, he's not, not George Lucas. He's listen. He's I feel like he's incapable of making a bad movie. He can make Every, entertaining movies. Yeah, his movies are very entertaining. Maybe there's not much uh, replay value for them, at least for me. But you even look at Star Trek Into Darkness, the, like a very flawed movie. But but it's, it's watchable. It's not nearly as bad as anything that... It's technically well-crafted. It's entertaining. But when you think about what happens in the movie, oh, okay, it's 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 very flawed. This isn't a great movie. Yeah, but it's like, you know, it's not... It's not bad. J- <laughs> it's it's J- not, like, unwatchable. Just for, just at this level alone, it's going to be... It'll be better than the prequels. J.J. knows how to make a movie. Absolutely. And George had, Lucas forgot how to do that. <laughs> George Lucas, I don't even know if he ever really knew how to do it. Nah, nah. I mean, I mean American Graffiti's good. <laughs> and even, and, but like, you even look at Star Wars. He and the had, first one, yeah. He had something. He had passion. He had something to prove. But it real, like really, there's almost, it's such a good feeling knowing, at the very least, this cannot be even a quarter as bad. As the prequels, I don't know. I, I have high hopes for it. I'm hoping. It's Listen, solid. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not expecting Empire. I'm Me not either. even expecting Star Wars. If I can get Return of the Jedi or better, yeah, I'm. It, I'm fucking a okay. It's a success. Yeah, and you know, I like that there's an air of mystery around it. That they're not fucking spoiling it. Oh, they're marketing it perfectly, and it's that's great. that's the one thing that JJ's mystery box thing is serving him well. He's not having to do that, oh, well, it's not Khan. Yeah, he's not outright lying. He's just not telling you, which is better. Well, just don't well, because, fucking tell me anything. Well, <laughs> like, also, well, because he's now in a in uncharted territory. There's nothing to lie about. Right. It's it's better because there's no... It's, it's not really taking anything like all, that's already existed. It's all not we remake. need to know is that, like, all right, ha- 
Harrison's back, Hamill's back, and Carrie Fisher's back. That's all we need to know. Yeah. And from there on, we don't need to know what the story is. We still do not... The movie's out in four days of, as of this recording. Mm-hmm. Well, three days, excuse me. We have no idea what the plot is. Seriously, I have no idea. And you know what? There are cast members we still haven't seen images of. Yeah, friggin' um... We don't know what Andy Serkis looks like. Andy His Serkis? We don't know Max what... Max side up. Yeah. I don't think we've seen uh, Donald Gleason, the that kid. Yeah, I haven't seen him either. There are just roles. We haven't seen Gwendolyn Christie outside of that fucking uniform. Yeah. Like, there is just shit. There is so much we have not seen of this movie. It's genius. And that's... I'm we, really we, excited we don't need for to. it. And because you don't need to, because it's the name sells itself. It's a new fucking Star Wars movie. All you need is, it's Star Wars, look how good visually it looks, and here's some goddamn John Williams brilliance <laughs> to make you just go, oh my god. I can't wait. I'm so happy we're getting new John Williams music and new Ennio Morricone music. In, in, in a span of two weeks. In a span of two weeks. I can't wait. Oh god, I'm so excited. It's literally just fucking, like... This could, I mean, I hate to be grim, but this could really be just, like, two great ways for them to go out. Because they're old men. Oh, they're old as fuck, dude. There, there's a very good chance John Williams might not make it to the third of this new trilogy. I'm going to be very sad when both of those guys pass on. I hope they live another hundred years, but we'll see. Here's to a hundred more. I mean, <laughs> dude, it fucking... It, it it's honestly been about a year since we got that first Chewy We're Home. Yeah. And I've only seen what, two trailers? Maybe three? It's been three. And then you have all these T V spots and I'm avoiding like the plague. Well I'm avoiding like the plague, but also I D V R everything so I just don't see commercials anymore. Oh uh, yeah. Which is a which is a fantastic thing. Uh D V R is great. well that whole season of South Park. You finished that, right? Did you oh, finish God, South Park? Yeah, it was great. <laughs> It's fucking genius. Perfect. Great season. We'll get into that in uh, yeah, the we'll, next yeah, we'll, episode of PCI. Oh, we're going to get into a lot of shit in that one. A lot of TV shit. But uh, isn't it funny that there's more good Rocky movies than Star Wars movies? <laughs> <laughs> Wait. One. One, two, three, two, four. Three. One, two, three, six, and seven. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. There are two, <laughs> there are two more good Rocky movies than there are Star Wars Star movies Wars. as of now. Well, yeah, I mean, I'm sure. Listen, I'm sure Disney's gonna keep like what like what Marvel's doing. Like everything is very consistent. Nothing is bad. Nothing's necessarily that great, but it's right. You know, it's right in the middle there. So I'm thinking they're gonna hold the same. Thing with Star Wars, the whole I, same standard up with Star Wars. I, but I think Star Wars has the greater potential for greatness than any Marvel movie. Oh yeah, absolutely. Because I mean, thus far out of what nine Marvel movies, I honestly think only three of them are like legitimately great, rewatchable movies. Uh, yeah. The, the Guardians, first Avengers, Guardians, Avengers, and what Iron, Iron Man, Man Three. 3. <laughs> yeah. All right, I'll give you that. Time is going to be very kind to Iron Man Three. Yes, it is. I can't believe people hated it. Because they're stupid. Honestly, because the movie <laughs> is purposely making fun of how bad Marvel villains have been. Yeah. And they're still bad. Really bad. Yeah, I, I had I Ant-Man on the other day because I bought it and I'm just like, Yellow Jacket's terrible. I was watching it. Yeah, James bought it on Blu-ray and then we watched it. And I was like, I had no problem with it. It's an okay, was, it's, it's just, was, oh, no, yeah. continue, continue, continue. Yeah, I had no problem with it, but there was nothing like, oh, wow, nothing wowed me. Like, I never need to watch it ever again. No, at, really at all. And Yellow, like, really, Yellow Jacket might be the most embarrassing attempt at a villain thus far. He's just, like, yeah, like, he's He's not evil. an entity. He's, yeah, he, he's not an entity until he tries to kidnap his daughter. And even then, it's just like, really? This like this happened quick. <laughs> that escalated quickly. This has really it 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 it's just it really is like you said the perfect definition of a mediocre movie. Yeah. 
It's the perfect... It's like the poster child for... Yeah, that was okay. Yeah. Well, we're going off on a tangent here. But is there anything else Star Wars related that you'd like to talk about? Any gripes? I mean, we had a lot of gripes about the prequels. Yeah, we had plenty of gripes. No, listen. I mean, for a, for a series that's very much split fifty fifty, good and bad. Yeah. It's it's still overall a great franchise that I love dearly in my heart. Mm-hmm. That you know, even with the prequel trilogy weighing on my head, I got very excited for a new Star Wars movie just from the fact that George Lucas would not be involved in any level. Yeah. That's, and then when JJ got involved, in and of itself. then you got JJ involved. I'm like, all right, he's a great popcorn filmmaker. He knows how to make entertaining movies. Uh-huh. Then you get the original cast back. All right. Then we hear they're filming on film, 35 millimeter. They're shooting <laughs> on location. That blah blah blah. This that and the other. We see the footage. We see. We hear the music. Everything's coming up great, and we're almost there. I'm excited. Uh, it's it's fucking nuts. It's it's honestly, yeah, who would have thought after Revenge of the Sith we'd ever be excited for a Star Wars movie again? Yeah, because they're bringing it back to the basics. Bringing it back to basics. They're moving the story forward and not going backwards. Mm-hmm. They're adding to the world. Because honestly, just the title alone, The Force Awakens, evokes that things are going to get big. Yeah. Like the, like the Force seemed to have died and that Luke was the only one. Just the title alone. I don't know anything about the movie. This is pure just speculation on a title. Uh-huh. The Force has to come back in a big way. That must be like a big plot of the movie. Of that The Sith or whatever are making a big play or yeah. something. Yeah. It's that the be. world is going to expand outside of the Skywalker family. Thank God. Skywalkers are... I, mean, I think I like Leia the best, honestly. I like Han the best, just because he's such a salty dick. Han? Han, yeah. Well, he's not really a Skywalker. Oh, I th- oh of the Skywalkers? Yeah, Leia's the best. <laughs> yeah. Just because she, she takes no shit and is very yeah. smart and knows what she's doing and isn't a whiny asshole. And I don't consider... I don't even consider Darth Vader Anakin Skywalker. No, he's not. Just like they said, I died. A, Anakin died a long time ago. <laughs> oh my God! Ugh. To a certain point of view, I didn't lie. Fuck you, Obi Wan. <laughs> so, I, oh. Honestly, one of my favorite things of the original trilogy is that Han hates C three PO. Oh yeah. He actively hates C three PO, and I hope, I hope, I hope Han Solo. Still hates C three PO. He sucks. He does, and I love that Han Solo is the one that's just like that makes you realize that C three PO is just such an asshole. <laughs> I love it. I hope because old, old Harrison Ford being a dick to a robot is something I need to see. <laughs> I, and I honestly hope that C three PO has a new arm because Han Solo ripped it off, or that he had Chewie rip it off. Wait, C-3PO has a new arm? You didn't see any, like, pictures of C-3PO has, like, a red arm? Nope. I, thought, I don't know. That was just one of those things that, that's that been going around on, like, magazine publicity stills. Uh, I haven't. I've stayed away from all that shit. Yeah, I no, they've... I haven't seen any of it. It's honestly just been shit like you would see in the trailer. Like, really. Like, oh, yeah. here's, here's Adam Driver doing nothing specific. Here's, <laughs> here's Oscar Isaac doing nothing specific, just dressed in a st- uh, X-Wing uniform. So is Adam Driver the voice, or is he, like, the actual guy in the costume? Oh, he's the actual guy in the costume. Because they have, the picture, like, a picture of him in that black, like, outfit uh-huh. without the helmet on. Yeah. And they're referring to him as, oh, he's Kylo Ren. And like you see, he's got the helmet and everything. Yeah. And he's doing the voice and, you know. I hope he keeps that mask on because he's an ugly motherfucker. He's he's the one character <laughs> that when they they announced he was cast in the movie, everyone's like, so he's a Sith, right? <laughs> <laughs> so he's going to be wearing a mask the whole time, right? <laughs> like, not even like, oh, he's going to be wearing a mask. Like, oh, he's a bad guy. Like, there's no way he's a good guy. He yeah. just looks evil. Oh, man. But yeah, dude. Three it's days. Almost, we're gonna, and we're seeing it together, guys. Yes, we are. On Thursday night. Thursday night, 7 o'clock, prime fucking time. I can't wait, dude. I can't wait to see what kind of fucking crazies are going to be in that theater. The, and the thing that I'm happy about, don't got to wait in line for a seat. Yeah. Got to sign. And honestly, what I want to happen, just because I'm an antagonistic dick, <laughs> I want someone to be sitting in my seat and, and I have to say, get up. 
<laughs> no, dude, I was here first. I don't give a fuck. I don't care how long you've been sitting online. Get the fuck out of my seat, or I will f- <laughs> fucking impale you like that goddamn Wampa in Empire. <laughs> oh, man. I think I'm most excited about Chewbacca, honestly. Chewbacca's my favorite character in all the Star Wars movies. I'm, I'm excited for Han and Chewbacca. I'm putting them in the <laughs> Because I love, I just love when characters talk where one of them you don't understand them. <laughs> so you're getting like half the conversation, but you know exactly what Chewie's saying. Yeah. Who's scruffy looking? <laughs> Laugh it up, furball. Oh, it's so good. Because he's just like, there's nothing better in like the original trilogy than just a well placed Chewbacca noise. <laughs> there's nothing better than. And uh, Harrison Ford being grumpy in those movies, like in, in Return of the Jedi, when he's trying to tell C three PO, tell these little guys to let us go. They think you're a god, right? Oh, I can't do that, sir. It would be it, it wouldn't be proper. And he just <laughs> proper. <laughs> and he gets up to attack. <laughs> <laughs> it's so genius. I think the thing because I I have this feeling that we're not gonna see Luke until the end of the movie. Yeah, probably. And it's not. gonna be this. Uh, fucking amazing moment where the John Williams music swells and we go ah <laughs> <laughs> oh my god it's Luke uh, the only thing I'm worried about is not gonna I'm not gonna be able to hear the shit cause people are probably gonna be screaming so loud well that's partly why I know for a fact I'm seeing it at least twice yeah I have to see it again obviously one because yeah we're gonna miss shit just from the reactions of people but two we're gonna have to know if it's good or not oh yeah because we did, like, everybody did it with the prequels. Everyone's like, was that really bad? I don't know. And then they see it a second time, like, oh, no, that's bad. Oh, no, my that's God, awful. that was bad. <laughs> oh, my God, like, what the fuck happened? We and need, this is a series that needs two viewings because we're going to be blinded. Yeah, and it's kind of the same thing. Well, yeah, we were blinded by Dark Knight Rises. Exactly, because we, we had the Dark Knight glow. And, mm-hmm. like, oh, the Nolan thing, the Batman thing, the Dark Knight, you know, just yeah. weighing on us and we had to see it again a few or at least just let time pass to just yeah. go oh that wasn't great yeah I saw it again like a few days later and I still liked it but I started and and then once it came out on Blu-ray I, I kept watching it over and over again I started noticing its shortcomings more and more but I mean I still enjoy it it's not you know it's whatever yeah there's there's mo- it's not like the prequel trilogy there's 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 a, there's a good deal of great stuff but just some stuff that feels half cooked and not abs- outright bad yeah it's not like it's i could still sit here and watch it like exactly. if yeah, any of the prequels are on unless i'm forcing myself to watch it I, it's just like i can't do it listen there is nothing in the prequels as good as bane yeah you're like, right like for as crazy as that voice is tom hardy is magnetic in that role and makes it work <laughs> if only i know we're going on a tangent again but just only because he makes the physicality work that the voice is great. Yeah. Like, oh, he looks so proper, but he's this big jack dude, and his eyes look like he wants to murder the fuck out of you. <laughs> oh, yes. Do we accept this man's resignation? <laughs> <laughs> and he's so proper, but he <laughs> looks like such a fucking lunatic. Oh, it's genius. But All yeah, right. so I mean, Star Wars. Star Wars. I mean, yeah. Any closing comments? I don't really. I think that's. I think we, we said exhausted pretty, Star Wars, man. Yeah, we pretty much exhausted this. Um, Hour and twenty three minutes. Whew. Yeah, fucking a. <laughs> uh, just a little fi- Just to wrap things up, do a little house house cleaning. Uh, I'm gonna have the uh, the rankings up probably Wednesday. All right. uh, I'm gonna do a ranking. Uh, you can guys can check out Mike's work is about to end this week. The chronology's caught up yeah. with his uh, de- deconstructing the ion cannon. Uh, you know, Anthony's got a few things on the I website. Got, I'm working on stuff. I'm sorry I haven't been put at outputting stuff, guys. But uh, you know, uh, you could check I'm out busy. Andrew's been doing a uh, his year end stuff. I'm gonna have year end stuff more towards the end of the year because I want more. I want I want more stuff. I want I don't know. I just want the year to be closer to finish so there's no like lingering doubts or anything you know yep because i'm not going to do a best of the movies list when i still don't have hateful eight or the revenant to talk right, about right right um what 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 was it 
Obviously, I'm going to have a Force Awakens review probably Friday. No, you know what? Because I'm going to see it twice. I'm going to wait on a review. Do it up. Uh, what's it? Uh, yeah, we're going to do another PCI. Um, this week. We've been doing Christmas movie talk, but of things that aren't typical Christmas movies. Yes. Uh, I did Iron Man 3. Andrew did Kiss Kiss Bang Bang. A- Anthony will be doing Batman uh, Returns, right? Yeah, Batman Returns. I'm working on it. Uh, Mike, I think, said he's going to do Brazil or Citizen Kane. Brazil! And uh, for the next episode we're going to do, it might be quicker than these last few. We're going to do something, not uh, a series watch like we've been doing. Since Christmas Day is going to have two big, massive westerns come out, Hateful Eight and The Revenant, we're going to do a western episode. All right. Uh, and it's going to be a three movie deal. We're going to rewatch Django Unchained as it's Quentin's western. Uh, Enaritu hadn't done a western at this point, so there's nothing to watch of his that would tie into this. Weird. And then we're going to watch me and Anthony's favorite westerns and talk about it. Uh, the Good, the Bad, and the Ugly from me. Yep. And uh, what'd you say? Hang 'em High for you? Yeah, Hang 'em High is probably, is probably it. Yeah, so, I mean, we're going to have three Westerns for your ass. Uh, three ve- very different Westerns, too. That's actually a good list. Yeah, it's nice. And uh, we'll have that up maybe not exactly next week because of Christmas and everything, but yeah, it might be taking by the end break. of the year. We'll by get, the end we'll of get the it year. to you guys. Don't worry about it. Yeah, by, by, because those two movies are still only limited on Christmas Day. They're not wide yet. Yeah. So we'll have it by New Year's at least. And... Uh, just you know, planning still in you know it's still in the planning stages. Might do a an episode of PCI with the three of us together in the same room. Yeah, that's gonna be weird. It's gonna be a new a different energy for the at the very least, and it'll oh. be an end of the year like discussion <laughs> yeah. where we'll just talk about the year in general. Yeah, so, Andrew's gonna be in New York, so yeah, it'll be, be very interesting. interesting, very interesting, and and very reflective. Only the only thing I know for sure. There's gonna be a lot of Mad Max talk. Oh god! You can't as talk about the year as if we haven't talked about the goddamn movie enough. Because <laughs> you you can't reflect on 2015 without talking about Mad Max Fury Road. Oh, uh, it's so good. I can't believe it got a Golden Globe nomination for Best Picture. That's insane. I love it. I love That's, it. That's honestly, this movie might pick up momentum at the Oscars. That's crazy. Good. I hope it does. It, I mean, there's no reason it shouldn't. None at all. It's Absolutely the, none it's all. still the best movie I've seen this year. <laughs> by a by a long shot too. <laughs> Fucking a. Well, all right. thanks for listening, guys. Thanks follow. for listening. It was kind of a long one. Yeah. Follow us on. Follow us on Twitter and shit. Mine's, uh, mine's at oh snap it's decap. Mine's I don't know I I don't remember my Twitter handle but. Raging Bull, right? It's probably Raging Bull 1990. You can follow. You can see us at pop culturally pop culturally insensitive dot com. For, uh, like us on Facebook and uh, yeah we'll see you guys soon thanks for listening may Thanks. the force be with you bye bye